Hey guys, welcome back. This video is brought by Popular Demand. I put a poll on Instagram the other day asking if you guys would like to know about what happened when I worked with unprofessional professionals in the hobby when I first started. So this video is going to be a story time and hopefully give you guys some warnings of things that you can look out for and basically how to make sure that you don't fall into the same issues that I had. So as many of you guys know, I started back in the hobby in May of 2017 and I originally had never had a saltwater aquarium before. I had tons of experience with freshwater aquariums, but this was going to be new territory. So I decided to make life easier to reach out to professionals so that they could do the uh, full installation from start to finish and then show me how to care for my tank and then eventually I would take over like that was the goal. So when I went on Yelp and saw that a lot of people charge $85, $95, upwards to $100 plus an hour to do installations, do work, several of these service people that work as individuals uh, had problematic reviews. Um, of course, there were some people that were like, oh, this is great, and the review looked a little suspect, but other reviews were like, really wild, like basically where the service people were um, attacking customers for having a difference of opinion of whatever happened between their transaction. So during my Yelp search, um, I did come across an individual. Of course, I'm gonna leave them nameless just because I don't like to put out bad information about people. But um, basically he had some decent reviews and he had a small business. So I figured, okay, like I'm gonna go ahead and support him and call him up and at least see what he has to say about doing an installation. Um, so of course, because I didn't know anything about salt water or the cycling process for salt water, I was just looking for someone that could literally show up one day, I would already have a tank there and they could just do whatever they needed to do to set up a salt water tank. And just uh, a word of clarification, this actually had nothing to do with coral. I, I didn't even know that you could keep corals in your tank. So this was really just like a fish only tank that I was looking for with some sand, honestly. So um, the only question that he really had for me was what type of tank did I have already? And you know, I didn't know anything about saltwater tank brand. All I had was a little freshwater 15 gallon column tank from Petco. He said that it should be fine. So I was like, okay, like you're hired. Um, he came, he installed the tank, and he brought me two clownfish, and everything seemed to be fine. Um, he then decided that he would charge me a reduced fee for coming by every two weeks to maintain my aquarium, and that worked for me because I didn't know what I was doing, so I figured everything was going to be fine. Um, after about a month or two, he then said my tank appeared to be cycled and that I could have coral. And I was like, well, that's cool. And so he had a lot of access to coral. So he would bring me different pieces of coral for free all the time. So I had no idea on the type of coral that I was getting. I didn't know about the value of the coral that I was getting. But the problem was some of the corals I didn't want to open up. They weren't happy. And the biggest reason is because I had prop improper lighting. Um, I didn't even know that you needed a good light. So once he realized that the corals weren't happy with the little cheap Amazon light that I had, that's when he suggested that I get a Kessel. And he had an older one, so he sold it to me for half the price. And at that point, I then had the Kessel. It didn't explain anything to me about uh, topping off your water, using RODI water. Basically, I wasn't doing things properly because I just didn't know. I did make an effort to at least try and look online. Um, but communication with him was like really choppy. So when my water level started getting low, I was like, okay, I definitely need to give these fish something. Once he came back, he realized, okay, yeah, you didn't use the right water. This is RODI water. Like this is where you find it, blah, 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 blah. Like that was great. And I thought, I figured we were good. Then I noticed it was just really difficult for me to keep fish. I remember questioning him, like, why is everything dying? Like, I've never had death like this in a freshwater tank. Like, this is crazy. Like, and his, his excuse would just be like, oh, well, you know, maybe it's the, like, maybe it's the lighting, maybe it's the tank. Like, I feel like you should upgrade your tank. They might be stressed. So I was like, you know what, you're right. So um, he actually offered to upgrade my tank for me. He said that he knew people who, built custom tanks and that he could do it and make a, uh, he took a measurement of the wall area that I wanted. And so again, I just trusted him that he would be able to provide this tank. And he brought the tank, it was about double the size that I thought it was going to be. Um, it was a 55 gallon and it was beautiful. And when he set it up that day, I was so happy. Um, it was crystal clear, the lighting was shimmering perfect. Like I was in such good spirits and so excited for it. 
Um, and this was the first time too that I actually had like a back chamber behind the tank where you could put like the carbon and the return pump and things because in my last aquarium, I didn't have that. I just had a little heater dangling and then like a hang on back filter. Um, you know, so I, I thought that that was sufficient because I just didn't know any better. So um, once I had that tank up and running, things started, seemed to go well. Um, the corals were doing really well. Um, at this point, I almost had a fully stocked tank of corals um, and had no idea what any of them were, but it was awesome. Um, and then he started getting really busy because he traveled a lot for work. It was just very difficult to uh, get a hold of him. And our deal of him coming every two weeks turned into every three weeks four weeks and then sometimes I would go like a month or two without seeing him and of course the algae growth um, everything was just getting like really out of control and because I hired him to do everything I wasn't testing on my own and um, I didn't know better because I was like oh I have a professional because so much time would go by between him servicing it I started to have some serious concerns with him about it so to spare you guys a lot of extra details um, he basically wasn't available and I was tired of my tank looking horrible so I just said you know what I'm gonna go ahead and turn this into a freshwater tank which was a whole other fiasco because once we did that um, it ended up having a bacterial bloom and algae bloom and he didn't know how to fix that so I was once again left on my own trying to resolve something by trial and error and I enjoyed it for about two to three months and then I just realized you know what like I miss my saltwater tank, I wanna have a new one. So I had him back over, he gave me water for my tank and um, he brought me some fish and everything was good initially. And once again, uh, they were not the healthiest and I just figured something was had to be wrong with the water quality. And that's just when I realized I needed real filtration. Like he told me um, that him changing the water and introducing carbon was gonna be sufficient. That now that I'm experienced, I know that aquariums sometimes just need more than the bare minimum, that this just really wasn't going to work. So I basically um, asked if I could introduce a skimmer, a sump, you know, underneath the cabinet area. And he was like, no, unfortunately, like your cabinet space isn't big enough. And then that's when I just really became upset because I'm like, well, I paid you money to upgrade my aquarium obviously for salt water in the very beginning and you said that you had people that specialized in this and once you did it you brought me an aquarium that now you're saying doesn't have true cabinet space to have real equipment um so his solution which again i don't know why he decided this but he felt getting a phosphate reactor was going to help the situation um, he also said that he wasn't going to have to come back and change the contents of it for at least three to four months, which I found out is incredibly way too long to be changing that. And of course it stopped churning after like a week or two. And um, that's when it honestly should have been played around with. But I, now I just paid over a hundred dollars for a phosphate reactor that wasn't doing anything. He was trying to assure me that it was going to help with the clarity of the water and it wasn't. Um, and so I just begged him for something because I'm like, I we, we need to do something. He basically said I could get one of those small skimmers that could go in the back of the aquarium, not underneath. And so the brand that he recommended was um, Innovative Marine DC Skimmer. And I looked it up online because at this point, I'm like, let me just check this aquarium uh, equipment because you know I've already had faulty lights, faulty return pumps because he always chose the cheapest stuff um, and I didn't know any better. And so when I looked at the reviews for the skimmer, it was about 50-50. Half the people were saying that it worked great and then the other half of the people were saying that it died early on or they had different noise and other issues with it. So I was kind of scared because I was like, you know, I really don't want to invest in another piece of equipment that has this many potential problems after everything I've already been through. He assured me that it was going to be fine. If anything, he acted like he didn't know what I was talking about and he went ahead and ordered it from a third party person never found out to this day who this random uh, merchant was, but that's who he gets a lot of his stuff who buys it wholesale. He then installed it, it didn't work the next day. And you know, I was like, you know what, this was a bad sign, can we take it back? And he was shocked, so he came through that week. He, he realized it wasn't working, so he did take it back. He said he would order another one. I insisted that we just go ahead and order a different brand, but he insisted that we keep that brand and it was probably just a weird one. At this point, I knew I didn't want to use the brand anymore, but because I didn't have any real knowledge of equipment in the hobby, I just went ahead and let him lead the way and tried it one more time. 
And of course that stopped working after another week. So when I asked him to take it back to the guy this time, he said that the man was refusing to take it and wouldn't give him a refund and if anything was directing me to call the manufacturer myself. Now, just uh, a moment here. I had no idea that like, I could personally call a manufacturer and deal with something. I've never really had to do that. I don't do hands-on stuff. I don't work with equipment that often. So this was like all new territory for me, sorry. Um, but I was like, no, like I shouldn't have to call the manufacturer when it's only been like two weeks and this product hasn't worked uh, from the person who sold it. They just need to go ahead and refund us and we can get something else. And um, when I asked this person to speak to the merchant directly, he basically said, no, the merchant doesn't want to speak to you, um, which I thought was really unprofessional. So I was pretty much left with keeping it and dealing with the manufacturer myself um, or getting my money back from the service person. And I didn't want to do that because I didn't want him out of a hundred plus dollar. I think it was like $160 for it. Um, you know, when he tried to do the right thing and at least get me a skimmer. He basically had a compromise that he would just give me um, some additional service work as a trade-off and then I could just buy another skimmer of my liking later on. Even though I didn't really wanna have to come out of any more money towards a skimmer, I just didn't want him to have to pay me out of pocket. So that was the most equitable thing I felt like I could do um, at the moment. And after he, um, pretty much finished adding some new rocks to my tank and finished the service. We shook hands like we always did and I never heard from him again. And that was really disappointing to me because we had worked together for three years. And when I think about it, it's like, you know, I trusted you with your knowledge and your experience to do a proper installation the first time. And we should have not have had half the problems that we had. Um, I suffered a lot of loss because we use cheap equipment that is known for not working. Um, we suffered a lot of loss because we weren't able to stick to his schedule because he was constantly traveling or hard to get a hold of. Um, also, I had one of the smallest tanks out of most of his clients, so I was also like the least priority for him. So, you know, I really uh, felt bad about it because I did my best to support a small business person and it just felt like they took my money and put me in a worse off position. I would have much rather just paid the money that I paid for this set up and had it done right the first time than experience so much loss and so many downs versus ups for the first three years of trying to do this. But, um, you know, that's why I made a decision that when I moved, that I was going to have to upgrade because I was not going to bring that tank with me anywhere else in the future. It's just unacceptable. It was definitely a lesson learned. Um, I'm not gonna be nasty. I'm not gonna go write an evil Yelp review, but I just wanted to put the notice out there for people who are new to the hobby that you're working with um, individual service people that have limited access to things that um, ha maybe have a lot of clients and their schedules maybe not always guarantee. You should really consider what would happen um, if they can't come to you for a service or if something goes wrong with a product that they bring to you. You know, definitely do your research, look at YouTube videos, go on online forums, um, ask pretty much anyone in the hobby on Instagram. I'm sure they'll respond back to you with an opinion. And I would just do your best to make sure that the equipment that you have isn't cheap. So even though I appreciate him trying to make everything affordable, that attempt to do that just resulted in way more stress and way more problems for me. Um, again, I know it wasn't intentional, but here we are. So I hope this video finds everybody well and just kind of gives um, some people some things to think about. So that's all I have for you guys for now and stay tuned for the next one.